All right, part C asks us to find the x-coordinate of each point at which the graph of g has a horizontal tangent line. For each of these points, determine whether g has a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither a minimum nor a maximum at the point, and justify your answers. And this, this justify your answers line right here um, is very important. It, it means that we need to be very clear about why we said what we said. Okay, so um, the first thing we look at, um, if we recall, I didn't save this right, but we, we should recall from part B that the derivative of x was equal to f of x. It was from the fundamental theorem of calculus. There that we got that. And we're looking for horizontal tangents, okay? So basically, we're looking for all points where g prime of x equals zero, which means we're looking for where f of x takes on the value of zero. Okay, so we look at the curve and the value is the y coordinate and we go through and we see, okay, here's one point when x is negative one and here's a second point when x is positive one and nowhere else does the graph have, does the graph of f take on a value of zero in this interval negative four to three. So, x equals negative one and x equals one since g prime of x equals f of x and f of negative one equals zero and f of positive one equals zero. That's a lot of ands, but I think it's grammatical right there, so I'll leave it. But here are the two values. And then the second part, which is probably what they really meant by the justify step, they didn't necessarily maybe need all of that wording there, but they said determine whether g has a relative minimum or relative maximum or neither um, at the point. Okay, so if we look here, uh, as we approach negative one, we'll look at this one first. To the left of negative one, f is positive or g prime is positive. To the right of negative one, f is negative, g prime is negative, which means that it that g was sloping up to the left with a positive slope and down to the right with a negative slope, meaning that at this point right here, when x is negative one, g must have a relative minimum. Okay, so we'll say g of x has, did I say minimum? I meant maximum. If I said minimum, I was wrong. Maximum, sorry. g of x has a relative maximum at x equals negative one since g prime of x, I'm going to be very clear, g prime of x equal to f of x is greater than zero in the interval negative four, negative one, not including the negative one, and g prime of x equal to f of x is less than zero in the interval negative one, one. Okay, so a relative maximum at x equals negative one. We have all this. This is the justification. All right, and then let's look at when x equals one. 
when x equals 1, we can see that the g prime of x equal to f of x is negative in this interval, so it's sloping down. And it's also negative afterwards. So what happens is it's a, I think it's a saddle point is the word I'm looking for, or term, I guess. So it's sloping down, it levels off, and then continues sloping down. So it doesn't actually get a maximum or minimum, just a horizontal tangent. So I'd say g of x has, how do I want to say this? I'll, I'll say, I'll use the words they use. Neither a relative maximum nor a relative minimum at x equals 1 since to the left g prime of x equal to f of x is less than 0 negative g is sloping downwards um, in the interval negative 1 1 and g prime of x equal to f of x is still less than 0 in the interval 1, 3. And you could probably, um, you could probably make an argument about this. Um, so let's see, has neither. You can make an argument without saying all this. You could say um, g prime does not change signs. This is the first derivative test. Okay.